everyone and welcome back to the World Dance Channel. In the last video we introduced the art manager Sergei Diaghilev and his ballet company, which has made Russian ballet named in the international stage. From 1909 to 1929, the dance company has presented a large number of classic works and most of which came from a choreographer, Michael Fokin. Michael Fokin is a Russian-American famous ballet choreographer, actor, ballet innovator, known as the father of modern ballet. He born into a family of businessmen in St. Petersburg in 1880, and later enrolled at St. Petersburg Ballet School at the age of nine, where he graduated from 1889 to 1898 as a solo dancer at the Mariinsky Theater Ballet in St. Petersburg. His performance is elegant, bouncing high and light, and has played the lead role in the classical ballets Kikita, Ramonda, and The Sleeping Beauty. Duncan, a modern American dancer, performed in Russia in 1905. The performance reflected advanced philosophy for that era. Fokin was strongly inspired by Duncan's dances. He believes that the emergence of this free dance is due to the empty of traditional classical ballet. I have seen many things that I have preached and used in practice, nature and true simplicity. He also believes the development of ballet is not in the complete denial of their own and take the road of modern dance, modern ballet should not abandon traditional ballet, but to take a reform. Dance should have thoughtful content without eliminating its skills and techniques. Under the guidance of this new idea, he created ballet works innovatively. Some of Fokin's early works include the ballet Athos and Galatea, 1905, and the Dying Swan, 1907, which was a solo dance choreographed for Anna Pavlova with Lasinia's music. In 1909, Sergei Diaghilev invited Fokin to be the resident choreographer of the first season of the Ballet's Russes in Paris. At Ballet's Russes, he collaborated with other artists to create a ballet of Nikolai Rimsky-Korsakov's Scheherazade, which premiered in 1910. The ballet was inspired by symphonic poems composed by Rimsky-Korsakov and the tale of the 1001 Nights. The sets designed by Leon Bax matched the sexualized choreography. Despite the lack of historical accuracy, the ballet was successful due to its brilliant colors, exoticism, and sexual overtones. The 1910 production featured Nijinsky in the role of the Golden Slave. He has a famous ballet work Les Sulfids. It is a short, non-narrative ballet described as a romantic reverie and recently cited as the first ballet to be simply about mood and dance. Les Sulfids has no plot but instead consists of several white-clad silks dancing in the moonlight with the poet or young man dressed in white tights and a black tunic. It was with music by Frédéric Chopin orchestrated by Alexander Glazunov. Glazunov had already set some of the music in 1892 as a purely orchestral suite under the title Chopiniana. Another ballet, The Firebird, 1910, with music composed by Igor Stravinsky was also created by a committee, a process inspired by the Wagnerian notion of Gesamtkunstwerk, which is the synthesis of elements such as music, drama, spectacle, and dance to create a more cohesive artwork. Petrushka, 1912, with music also composed by Stravinsky and set design by Alexander Benoit's Petrochka, was inspired by the Russian puppet which traditionally appeared as a butter wheat, shrove tied, fairs. In this ballet, Fokin included street dancers, peddlers, nursemaids, a performing bear, and a large ensemble of characters to complement the plot. The story was centered on the sinister magician, Enrico Cicchetti, and his three puppets, Petrochka, Nijinsky, the ballerina, Tamara Karsavina, and the savage Moor, Alexander Orlov. Fokin's ballet Le Spectre de la Rose, 1911, showcased Nijinsky as the spirit of the rose given to a young girl. In 1914, Fokin published five principles in the London Times, one. To create new form corresponding to the subject, the most expressive form possible for the representation of the period and the character of the nation represented. Two, dancing and mimetic gesture should serve as an expression of its dramatic action. Three, the new ballet admits the use of conventional gesture only where it is required by the style of the ballet. Four, the expressiveness of groups and of ensemble dancing. 5. The alliance of dancing with the other arts like music or of scenic decoration. It does not impose any specific ballet conditions on the composer or the decorative artist but gives complete liberty to their creative powers. He moved to Sweden with his family in 1918 and later established his home in New York City, where he founded a ballet school in 1921. By 1924, he organized the American Ballet Company, which performed regularly at the Metropolitan Opera House and toured the United States. His first piece for the company was the comedy Bluebeard, set to a score by Jacques Offenbach. 
Ensuite Ballet Les Sophids was the first production at the American Ballet Theatre on the 11th of January 1940. Among the new works Bokeem created during this period were Cendrillon, 1938, and Paganini, 1939. Bokeem's innovation of ballet was from his study of Greek and Egyptian art, including base painting and sculpture and incorporating oriental elements into his ballet works. The success of Russian ballet resulting from the strict ballet training method. In the next section, let's talk about the Russian ballet education. Russia has a traditional method of selecting and training ballet dancers. How do these traditions come into being? What is the difference between Russian ballet and European schools such as France and Britain? Let's continue the story of Aganova the Russian Schoology representative. Thanks for your compliments and positive comments. We will get feedback to you soon. Welcome to tell us your questions during the study of dance. There are any dance film ideas welcome.